In terms of raising capital, most people think they got to go out to Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, you did it through crowdfunding. crowdfunding. Right. What do I, Sean, need to have in order to be successful? What do I need to show? Do I need to come with just an idea? Do I need something that worked? Like you raised over a million dollars. So what was it that made you this successful? As opposed to if I'm Joe Blow, Sean, who just, I want to go and I want to raise a million dollars. What do I need to do that you did? Well, first, that kind of money? Well, first, I think the product was sound. Start Engine is like applying for a job. Like you gotta be, you gotta be ready. Like I said, when I had to learn that keynote and that deck and that presentation and understand your product and have all these things. And, and at this point, like I said, we had had a year of working with the app and understanding the data, the proof of concept, all these things were there and available. So we got accepted to the platform, which isn't easy because they don't accept everybody. Um, but then you have to have a bit of marketing savvy in how to market your raise in a way that responds to the consumer because people are investing in the product, but they're also investing in you. Correct. So you have to know your product. So before I'm going to hand my money over to somebody, I got to see how you move, like how passionate you are about your product. What do you know? Again, three Phenomenal women that were the reason that I was able to raise this money. Again, was Monique Idolette, right? Who, who has her own company, Rain Ventures. Dawn Dixon, who has raised a million dollars three times on Start Engine, right? Um, and, and Angela Benton, who raised a million dollars in eight days on Start Engine for her company, Streamlytics. All of them were instrumental in, in coaching me in that process. Uh, Monique made the suggestion. Dawn taught me the marketing. I actually hired Don to coach me. I said, listen, you know, you've done it better than I could ever do it. Let me learn from you, right? And, and she taught me the game. And then Angela made the connection. She just reached out to the guys at Star Trek and said, hey, this guy, he's got a really good app, you know, check it out. And so it's also about relationships. It's also being able to pick up the phone and call people, um, never burn bridges. I always say the branches you break up on the, on the, on, on the way up the tree of success aren't there to catch you if you Oh, I'm a relationship guy. I always want to be able to call somebody because those relationships are more valuable than money. There are things that I'm doing now with fan base and th that I can pick up the phone and make phone calls. And if I had been an asshole or done bad business, I wouldn't have these, these relationships available now to try to make this company grow. So I'm also big on relationships and how you treat people as well. Got you. You, you know, you raise, I, I want to say, are you like the second uh, African-American person to raise over a million dollars in crowdfunding? On Start, on Start Engine, I am. I'm the third ever in crowdfunding. Beautiful. And I'm the second, I'm the second most, I raised the second amount, um, second most amount of money in 24 hours. We raised over $700,000 in 24 hours um, on, on Start Engine. And so that was another, you know, being right there in some companies exactly. really good platforms. Congratulations. I, I, I want to ask from the reverse side. Uh, you lived there in Atlanta. Uh, mm -hmm. Another another gentleman who raised a ton of money crowdfunded um, is Jay Morrison. We had him on mm -hmm. a program not too long ago. Uh, what is what is your responsibility? You, Isaac Hayes is the third. Mm -hmm. Your responsibility to your investors. You have thousands of investors who yeah. are probably not wealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, the the two hundred and fifty six dollars that they put in to to uh, invest in your dream mm -hmm. that that's money that they could have probably went out and bought groceries with. How do you mm -hmm. see your responsibility to to your investors? And is there a level of transparency that you must have, or you know, I you know again, I don't come from this world. Uh, yeah. You're required to have a level of transparency. Is there anything? And I'm just speaking for anybody yeah. looking to raise money in the future. Yeah. So when you when you do a Reg CF raise, you have to do an enormous amount of paperwork. It was a three month process just to get the campaign active. Um, you have to do all these filings with the SEC. You have to be transparent about your financials, your traction all of these things. So you have to kind of lay it out on the table because you have to give the investors all the information to make a sound investment, right? 
Um, I feel the responsibility to my investors. Um, Cause someone asked me the other day, I was like, well, man, if someone wants to come and buy a fan base for a billion dollars, would you sell it for a billion? And I'm like, we're valued at 20 million now. And I think that would be an enormous, you know, that's like 50 X. That's like great. It's 50 times worth what I got it. But for someone that put $256 in, that's not a lot of return for them. Right. And I want to grow this company and scale this company in a way that benefits the people that really got it there, right? That really put in the money to raise the bar and raise the valuation of the company. So I'm looking to scale this thing uh, as big as I can because I think community is very, very important, especially in the social media space and in technology. So to, to be able to, to reward those that believed in me and the duty and the responsibility, because I mean, we have some people that are some really, really big investors in the company, but it's not about the big investors. And, they, and, I, and I appreciate the dollars that they put into, but as a community collectively, using platforms like Start Engine and crowdfunding, if this is successful, and as I know it will be, it can set the model for how Black people fund their businesses moving forward, right? Meaning, okay, it's community investment. So let's say I want to start a chain of barbershops, right? I go to Start Engine, I raise $5 million to open up the first few barbershops, right? And we all put our money into Start Engine to do that. And now we own part of the barbershops, but now we only go there to get our haircut. And so now we're funding our own companies and you can do that with a restaurant. You can do that with a television program, a film, an app, any type of business using crowdfunding. So people, and people always say, what did Barack Obama do for black people? What did he do for them? And I'm like, well, he didn't necessarily do anything specifically that with the jobs act for black people, but understanding the lack of access to capital that black people have if you're not taking advantage of the Jobs Act, he did an enormous thing for you because he took away he 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 took away that regulation that allows any of us a shot at the at the big time win with investing with the Jobs Act. So when people say that, I always bring up the Jobs Act because I'm like, oh, you didn't know that you could go out and raise public money for a private company right now because of Obama and the legislation that he passed. So that's extremely important to let people know. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And thanks for bringing that to light. Uh, yeah. How many investors do you have so far? And I know you mentioned that earlier. And how much of the, what percentage of the company do you still own? So we have 5,600 investors. Um, I, the, the percentage of that I still own the company is 80%, which is phenomenal. Yes, it is. That's 80% of the company without a board. We've taken no venture capital money. Um, you know, I have, I have my CTO. And, and his company, which are part owners of the company, which you have to have when you raise venture capital, because when you go say, hey, we want to raise a hundred million dollars. All right, who, who about to build all this? And we have a track record of already being successful at accomplishing what we've wanted to build. So um, to have a, to own 80% of a company and still have enough room. Like I just saw a tweet from a friend of mine, matter of fact, Jewel, Jewel Burks, like I said, who's the head of Google for startups. She's seen people get offered deals Right. Like like incubator deals for twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars for like 20 percent of the company. Just that. And I'm like, that's so predatory to be able to have to give up 20 percent of your company for 30 grand, 40 grand. That's ridiculous. And see, someone from the music business would look at you like, fam, never. Like, I'm not going to do that. What are you talking about that? No. Knowing your worth understanding the outcome, but sometimes people don't understand, like they feel like that's the only choice that they have. So they take that. And then what happens is it's predatory. You have a board now that you may not control. And then a lot of times with venture capital, it's about flipping, right? Three times, three X of any investment for a venture capitalist is supposed to be a win for them. So if they put in a million and get back three, that's all they care about, right? So imagine that you get voted out of your own company or they decide to exit the company when you don't want to exit. And in hindsight, there are a couple of companies that made some exits and I'm thinking they probably didn't want to sell, but they probably had a board that wanted to get their bread back. And they were like, look, man, you're about to, you're about to be, you're about to be worth 500, $600 million. Take it and go build something else. You can't complain about that. If you got $500 million in your pocket, right? You can't, right. who's going to complain about that, but you might have a larger vision. And I think that's something extremely important. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.